Hello. Hello, YouTube. <laughs> YouTube's not listening, but I am. <laughs> Hang on, I'll, I'll, I'll just pose for the thumbnail. <laughs> I'll, I'll, try, I'll try and mirror you, but match your expression. <laughs> it's, a, it's a humdinger of expression. It's a cheesy smile, but there's some unmistakable pain and terror in there. <laughs> I, I'm only smiling because of the gun in my back. <laughs> it's been there for 36 hours. I haven't slept. <laughs> there it is. There's the daddy. <laughs> the, uh, I, I like your picture. The, 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 the new one. This routine I'm doing is a lot funnier than it would have been if you still had that avatar that you <laughs> that you stole from Roy Lichtenstein. <laughs> yeah, we, 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 we've blurred out the original. <laughs> it's the decent thing to do. Oh shit, wait, this is the Shive's shoulder. This is the Shive's heart shoulder, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Your avatar was the Lichtenstein rendering of the Shive's heart shoulder. Yeah, just TV. <laughs> Chrissy, do, do you do you go mysteriously quiet whenever your friends are, are accusing Bearing of stealing from a long-forgotten cable TV show? <laughs> Lichtenstein sells his paintings for tens of millions of dollars. That piece is on display in the Museum of Contemporary Art in Tokyo. You might want to figure out the exchange rate between yen and virtue signals. Uh oh, it's not looking good. This is why the road to hell is paved with good intentions, Chrissy. Because good intentions cost nothing. <coughs> Satan's known for being frugal. Especially in the winter months. Oh, run, VT. <laughs> run, VT. It's not the 90s anymore, Mike. And it never will be. And it never was. <laughs> okay. All right, run something. So one of my favorite new YouTubers is Ted Charesse, and he recently put out a video on the unfunny left. I know! Just so I did so boring, do good as they are, for fuck's sake! But this is just some random drunk shithead. Well that was uncalled for. Moral of the story is it's not nice to call people drunks. Or any other kind of impairment, unless it's relevant. And yes, I did a hell of a hatchet job on you there in the editing department. But this is the fire you play with when you dance too close to the heartstrings. Lady Muck Icarus. But how many buttons would I have to press? How many knobs would I have to tweak to make it look like you're just exploiting this young man for your own social point scoring verisimilitude? None, Chrissy. Zero. Sweet far. I could have sat the fuck back and did nothing, but I did tweak it to make you appear inconsiderate instead of just manipulative. Or should I say, just inconsiderate instead of manipulative. Hey, how do you feel about Andrew Norton? Ah, good guy, bad guy, does it all depend? Ah, I've made my point, let's crack on. I feel like to really get a sense of the edgy lulls and kecks available, you have to go online. Blip. Sarcasm detected. Because that is where people can be truly free to be as horrendous and despicable to one another as is possible. Sarcasm has collided unexpectedly with reality. You can heap verbal abuse and sexual harassment on random strangers, which is not something generally considered okay in the crappy old real world. In the absence of, or at least tidying up, of the phantasmic fart you call sexual harassment, what you just described is a good thing, in my opinion. A place where you can be assholes to each other and everyone's fine with it. I'm not in favour of safe spaces in the assumption that the rest of the world is dangerous, but I am in favour of dangerous spaces in the assumption that the rest of the world is safe. Things like mosh pits and public highways. And comment sections in social media. Have you ever been in a mosh pit? So it's when a crowd of metalheads picks a spot near the middle of the floor and collectively decides this is the spot, this is the space 
where we're allowed to be assholes to each other. Well, there isn't. You know, it's, it, we're pushing each other around as hard as possible is not just permitted, but encouraged. It's a beautiful thing, Chrissy. They don't, they don't hit each other. They don't stab each other. <laughs> fucking gypsy fight. <laughs> what do you think? They don't fuck you up to our fucking snare traps. <laughs> but, fucking snare traps. <laughs> fucking put you in a wheelie bit, you. Gosh, like. Oh. <laughs> uh, in mosh pits, they, they just push each other. They just keep each other moving. If you're not moving, you shouldn't be in a mosh pit. It's like a trust exercise you might do in a drama class. But more violent. <laughs> As an, an audience sitting down is like the particles in a solid. An audience standing up is like the particles in a liquid. But only in a mosh pit do they become a gas. And they do sort of obey, obey Boyle's, Boyle's law to some degree. <laughs> like his energy prevents its compressor. You know, so and there's another thing going on with roads. Highways in particular. Motorways. Freeways. The big ones. Where not only is it permitted to drive a ton of combusting machinery in excess of 60 miles an hour. It is mandatory. If you are not in such a vehicle and travelling close to that speed. Then you should not be on that road. Obviously in this case... You, you're avoiding collisions instead of encouraging them, but it's still a dangerous space, a space that is exceptionally dangerous if you are not there to capably do a specific thing. Everyone understands this when it comes to roads. Everyone except some very unfortunate animals. We need dangerous spaces like roads so we can get somewhere. And we like having dangerous spaces like mosh pits so we can unwind. I understand a similar thing goes on in team sports. I, whatevs. Whatever gets you off. Whatever turns you on. Whatever lights your candela. Whatever floats your bows on. And there are some places on the internet. Chrissy. That are carved out for the purpose of moshing with words. Among them is a thing called a comment section. We will not leave scribbles on your articles themselves. We will not leave marks on your videos themselves. We will not storm onto the stage of this rock concert and we will not get the show, the show shut down. But this rock concert, Chrissy, is never ending. And somewhere, somehow, within the area in which we're allowed to dance, a space is going to form in which some very energetic people will play dodgeball with some nasty words. Cunt, wallop, faggot, wham, right back at you. It's expressive, it's liberating, just like a mosh pit. And it has the added bonus of involving zero violence. Pushing can be violent, and sometimes people do get fucked up in mosh pits, but no one, literally no one, Chrissy, has ever been so much as scratched on the internet. It's an even more beautiful thing. And yet it's referred to as cyber violence by an authority that literally assassinates people with a computer. I realise all these activities I've described will sound to most feminists like various manifestations of toxic masculinity. Cars, computers, pushing each other around, lifting each other up. <laughs> but I recall somewhere in the Reasonable Questions video you claimed to care about men's issues in some way. And you should know, men like to go places because it's awesome. And men like horseplay because it's cool. And men like to exchange abrasive insults with their best friends because it's funny. Do you see why it's funnier to insult each other and not mean it than it is to constantly be nice to each other and potentially not mean it? Inevitably not mean it. If you can make each other laugh, nothing else matters. I'll say that again. If you can make each other laugh, nothing else matters. It's really very simple. Yeah, I guess you, you might be starving and diseased and at death's door, but if you can make each other laugh, then at the very least at that moment, nothing else matters. So please don't take away our dangerous places. It is in everyone's best interest that we have those spaces to, to continue to harness our abrasive nature in a controlled and healthy way. This is why we have art and sport and poetry and wine and the finer things in life.
because without them, we don't challenge ourselves. And when we don't challenge ourselves, we go mad. And then we go mad one, mad two, mad three. All right, this has become a silly place. Continue. Now, you may wonder why this kind of behavior is okay on the internet. It's because it happens online, on the internet. So that means it's okay. It's not because it's online, it's because it's remote and non-physical. Same goes for fucking carrier pigeons. <laughs> a pigeon could conceivably do something violent, but the message tied to its foot cannot. It might have anthrax in it, but it just kill the pigeon. So you... <laughs> if internet comments count as a form of informational violence, then so does postal chess. Sending someone a letter saying Queen takes D4 check is an act of postal violence. It's not, is it? Is it? And nor is going to Twitter and saying, I hope you get raped. Okay? The, that queen is not really killing that horse. And that no woman is actually getting raped. Do you understand why it's okay for a video game character to kill another video game character, even though it's not okay for a human to kill another human? Do you, do, do, do you comprehend the difference there, Chrissy? Because your sarcasm suggests you don't. The premise of your sarcasm is that there is no essential difference between the real world and the digital world. And sorry to shit in your hairdryer, Chrissy, but there is. There very, very is. This is not Tron. This is, this is not the 80s. <laughs> and it never happened. We can dream. We can dream. People are afraid to merge on the freeway. And you should not complain about it or someone will be like, uh-oh, someone said mean words on the internet. This is very logical. It's it's like a lovely, logical sphere with a lovely round shape to it kind of thing. Let's plot this in an algorithm, shall we? All right, we'll title it, Where Should I Go Now? All right, what do you want to be? Polite or not polite? If you want to be polite, go to... Civilizations in the real world. There, people are expected to be polite to each other and they're generally more than happy to oblige. Go there and stay there until you feel like you might be changing your mind, then start over. If you don't want to be polite, and that's perfectly understandable, then go to a game space, constructed or arranged specifically for the controlled suspension of inhibitions, and stay there. Until you feel like you might be changing your mind, then start over. This works for moshing as well. It's you know, dancing in politely. What we have here is two circles that meet in the middle at this subjective decision. Circular reasoning is in fact a key feature of an algorithm. It completes the circuit. But it's logically important because there's a decision in there that the subject can make. If not for that, it would indeed be inconsequential to the point of fallaciousness. Like, the circular reasoning of God and the Bible would not be fallacious if you linked another circle with the decision, do you trust the Bible, or something. Then you have two possible states, religious or non-religious, and any time you like, you could bring around and pull up in the other one. Generally, we don't. We generally stick to one or the other. Circular reasoning only becomes fallacious when you block off all the circles except one. Or when you draw a circle wherever you like and claim that's the right answer. So, let's go back to our algorithm here and see how you do with it, Chrissy. Let's, let's apply your inputs to this system. What do you want to be? You want to be polite, okay. So, go to the one on... Chrissy? Chrissy, mate, what are you, what are you doing, mate? That's, that, that path is not permitted in this algorithm. You've, you've, gone into the, you've gone into the impolite place to be polite. We, stop! Stop, Dolan! Now where are you going? You feared right off. Oh, oh, what's this? Tell everyone to fuck off. <laughs> well, I'll, you, you've got the hang of the impolite space there, Chrissy. But do you see how you came at it from the wrong angle? Oh, you've oh, look at this. You've you've drawn a circle here. That's hmm. <laughs> Just for fun, let's take another approach. Let's take the campus feminist method. Let's do the big red inputs. What do you want to be, Big Red? Oh, you want to be as impolite as humanly possible, right? Then you should... Oh, 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 look at that! She, 
She's gone the other way. She's gone to a university lecture to be a raging cunt. That is extraordinary, is it not? What's it? Oh, what's this? She's cry harassment. And then, <laughs> and then back on in here. Well, jeez, it, it appears you guys also have two circles linked by a subjective decision. <laughs> you got me there. And yeah, this explains why these these moderate feminists don't ever do a fucking thing to call out these radical feminists because they need each other. Otherwise, they'd be two free-floating artifacts of circular reasoning. <laughs> That's surprisingly clever. In the same way a termite colony is surprisingly clever. So to summarise, Chrissy, everyone uses circular reasoning. Everyone uses closed algorithms in order to arrive at decisions. But it takes you and your deluded authoritarian cistern to come along and make a mockery of what was once a well-oiled logical machine. Because you have no earthly clue how a polite civil society actually functions, Chrissy. You just dick around on top of it, like a child playing hopscotch on a helipad. The fail is immeasurable. Well done. So, Ted, my friend, Teddy Bear, hey, for your sake as a comedian, and mine as a humorless feminist. So, you've been called humorless. The ideology you hold and the political wing you occupy is faced with the charge of having a, a defective or inactive sense of humour. This is a long video you've done here, Chrissy. It's like half an hour long. Are you going to spend a decent portion of it perhaps defending yourself from this charge, perhaps displaying some humour <laughs> and give some, giving some examples of some lefties or feminists who are indeed funny? Or, Chrissy, are you just going to point the finger elsewhere and go, yeah, well, those guys aren't funny either. I thought that in order for us lefties to get back into the swing of things humorously, we should learn from the masters of the manosphereverse. They'll be able to show us all how to be properly funny. Yeah, I'm not in there. Naturally. Uh, well, normally I wouldn't mind. I mean, no, no one wants to feel left out, but it's a hit I'm happy to take for the benefit of not receiving too much attention from the crazies. But this is manif Manosphere comedy. Manosphere comedy. I'm right in there, Chris. You see, in the Venn diagram. I'm right in the middle of those cheeks. Like, like some kind of... Like some kind of <laughs> Sometimes I make things far too easy for myself, Chrissy. <laughs> so, in order, based on whatever number I happen to give them... Just out of interest, who's not in the Manosphere? Yeah, I mean, what identities or occupations are necessarily outside what, what, what you call the Manosphere, or what anyone calls the Manosphere? Feminists? Christina Hoff Summers is very popular among you know, MRAs and gamergators and sorts. Does, does that not count? It's confusing, isn't it? Here's another confusing one. Who's not in the skeptosphere? As in the skeptic community. I, mean, I have no problem being called a community of some sort. I commune with people on a regular basis, and that makes us a community of no particular adjective. So I have no idea what the fuck the sceptic community is. Who is outside it? The people who are never sceptical about anything? There are no such people. Even religious people are sceptical of other religions. And if you're not a sceptic, then you're sceptical of scepticism. <laughs> the only people outside the so-called sceptic community are the people who are... Skeptical about the wrong things? And that's... that's I, I don't like that crack. I don't even know what it is, but I don't like the sound of it. So the idea that scepticism is a community that borders on other communities is a complete nonsense. You could feasibly say that the Manosphere is a community that borders with the feminist community because there's not a lot of overlap there. But the sceptic community overlaps with everything. Because it's all things. So it might as well be no things. Sceptic community is 
an absurd marriage of words that was concocted to create a boogeyman of relational aggression. <clears throat> so if any of you start worrying or indeed celebrating at what you perceive to be the death of the skeptic community, save your breath. It was never born in the first place. You are paying reverence to the slaying of a dragon riding a spaghetti monster. This, this is apropos of nothing in the video I'm responding to. It's a, a rant I think I was thinking of doing in, in its own video, but you reminded me of it, so I thought I'd cram it on in here. We can already tell this is going to be a long one. All right, let's, let's plow through these as quick as possible. Janet Bloomfield, a.k.a. Judgy Bitch. That pseudonym might be a giveaway. See, like, this is an exaggerated character. Never mind. She put up a Patreon fundraiser, one of many, but this one was for a crossbow. Janet is an avid bow hunting enthusiast, and she sought $800 to buy a bow she referred to as the Angel of Death in order to be at the ready in case some feminist shows up at her door. So you see, Janet, what you should do, if you're going to do a fundraiser, make sure it's strictly for activist things, like air travel and studio space, and make sure you deliver exactly what you promise every single time. And then no one will ever pitch at you! <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly what we do at Honey Badger Radio. And you're all fucking butthurt by that too. It doesn't matter what MRAs raise money for or how they raise it. You all will shit on us for doing it, whatever it is. <laughs> Unless you're Willy Bumblebee. <laughs> and you're actually swindling MRAs out of a bunch of cash and then doing nothing with it. In which case, feminists will love you and hold you up as the one example of a decent denizen of the manosphere who really does care about men. Fucking hell. When Honey Badger Radio and their supporters do it properly, do it all transparently and by the book, when MRAs give money to other MRAs to go somewhere, make something and get the message out there, and they actually do it, it triggers the living fuck out of everyone else. The fact that MRAs are successfully handling any capital at all and achieving any amount of awareness raising at all triggers the ever-living fuck out of everyone else. And I mean everyone else. Feminists screech about it, MGTOWs screech about it, and those clever, clever bastards in the middle screech about it. You know, the ones who think feminists and men's rights advocates both need to shut the fuck up. Oh, but women's rights advocates are indispensable. In fact, I am one. Herp, look at me in the middle. And even quite a lot of other MRAs screech about it. The ones who spend 5% of their time addressing men's issues 10% of their time opposing feminism, and 85% of their time bitching at popular targets within the manosphere for spending too much time opposing feminism and not fixing everything yet. <sighs> at first, it was, we don't need men, so get rid of them. And then it was, okay, we do, but men don't need rights, so let's get rid of them. And then it was, Okay, they do, but men's rights don't need activists, so let's get rid of them. And now, it's... Okay, men's rights does need activists, but men's rights activists don't need... Um... The, the most followed men's rights activists, so get rid of them. <laughs> let's say the ten most popular people who identify as men's rights activists Jettison them from the movement, please. Collectively disavow them somehow, and then start again with the next 10 most popular, and then we totally promise we'll finally take you seriously this time. When you're in charge. When the time comes for anyone to know who the fuck you are. And to everyone who isn't you, and to everyone who doesn't at some point start taking the same crazy pills as you, it's very fucking obvious what you're doing. At every step of the way, you are trying to take your jackboot and stamp on a human face forever. Fuck you. Everyone who says that shit and likes it when other people say it. Fuck you. Get your shit together. <laughs> Get it all together. Put it in a backpack. All your shit. Get it together. And if you've got to take it somewhere, take it somewhere. You know, like take it to the shit store and sell it. Or put it in the shit museum. I don't care what you do. You just got to get it together. 
He <laughs> shits again. <clears throat> Morty. <laughs> you little jerk, Morty. <laughs> I'm serious, Morty. <laughs> you gotta suck my cock or we're gonna die, Morty. <laughs> <sighs> I can't do Morty. That's why I didn't even try. Gee, Rick, I can't do Oh, fuck, I, this, is, oh, this all took much longer than I thought. <laughs> but I, I did get a bit ahead of myself, didn't I? <clears throat> oh. Number nine. It would be remiss of me to skip over this possibly the most famous instance of satire. I've gone this whole time without ever even mentioning Rushby on my channel. I've never given him any attention at all. I had a clean record and you just pissed on my parade, Chrissy. Thanks, Obama. Well, we know you're listening. <laughs> Rushvi's article slash satirical thought experiment about making rape legal on private property so that women will start taking risk to their bodies seriously for a change. I have no interest in defending Rushvi, so instead I will defend Jonathan Swift. If you see what I'm saying. We give Jonathan Swift the benefit of the doubt when he says the poor should eat their children so they'll never go hungry or whatever it was in a satirical attempt to explain how logic without compassion can be flawed. But if Charles Manson were the one who said that, most of us would be a lot less charitable with our interpretations. We'd be far more likely to think he actually meant it because Charlie was a bit of a fruitcake compared with Swift anyway. Now, I don't like Rushvi. And I know very few people who do, but he is closer to Jonathan Swift than he is to Charles Manson. I know he's no Jonathan Swift. I know he's not an artist or an intellectual of any caliber, but he's closer to that than he is to Charles Manson because he has never murdered or raped anyone or encouraged anyone else to murder or rape anyone. But he does write books and articles. You don't, you don't have to give him the same degree of benefit of the doubt that you give to Swift, but you still have to give him some. More than you give Manson, yeah? Until someone actually turns up dead or raped because of Rouge B, provably, he is not Manson. There's a big old gulf between the two until that happens. A much bigger gulf than there is between him and Swift. Are we clear about that? I very much doubt it. I'm not sure what it's satirical of. I mean, this is less like Jonathan Swift's modest proposal. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm watching this bit by bit as I go along. I honestly didn't know where you'd take it. Uh, jinx, sort of. Where he wrote about poor Irish people selling their babies as food to sort of highlight the cruel indifference that some people had to their plight. And more like if Jeffrey Dahmer had written it. Called it. Called it so fucking hard. How many times could I call it this hard before I start to worry about how my head works? Cussie, Jeffrey Dahmer killed people and then fucked and ate their corpses. You do not get to compare that with people who have done nothing but write things you don't like. Cussie, you think like a sociopath. This is how sociopaths think. They project their own sociopathic thoughts onto everyone else who stands in their way so they can morally justify destroying those people. You must be the 200th feminist whom I have heard saying sickeningly stupid things about humanity and civil rights and kill all men and drink male tears. Her, her, that's just satire. But I do not compare any of them with Myra fucking Hindley unless there is any evidence at all that they have ever raped or murdered anyone. Because I, Christy, Unlike you and most of your buddies, I'm not a deranged sociopath with the self-awareness of a wet clump of Montmorillonite clay. It's an abiogenesis joke. Shut up. <laughs> oh dear, you've had the fantasy as well. The one where Sargon comes into your room and sexually harasses you. Yeah, you're only human. Whether he's sending porn to the alt-right. <laughs> Yeah. It's just for those listening, she's got the caption up, uh, I wouldn't even rape you. It wasn't even, I wouldn't even rape you. It was, I wouldn't rape you. He was trying to see just what can be described and counted as a rape threat. And sure enough, hundreds of people tell Jess Phillips, I wouldn't rape you. And what does she tell everyone? 
I've received hundreds of rape threats. Really, any tweet containing the word rape is considered a rape threat, provided you are a fucking mental case who wants to conquer the world with a club made of rape. Asking Christy Winters about tight Asian pussy. No! <laughs> Do you think Sargon has been harassing Christy? In a manner unreciprocated or unprovoked? There's something you might want to see. Sargon, 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 Moving on. Ah. Uh, <laughs> uh. Carl is always ready to just do a thing that would get you fired at work and call it a joke, therefore giving it magical immunity from criticism powers. Chrissy, yesterday I sat in my underpants drinking wine for six hours. That would also get me fired if I did it at work. But... Chrissy, I'm not at work. And neither is Sarkon. It's... Are you alright? Christy. See... See you... In this... In this video of yours... You've spent most of this video... Talking. Yet yeah, talking at a brisk pace and an average conversational volume. Now, this would get you kicked out of the place... If you did it in a library... Or a funeral service... Or a radio station... But, Chrissy, I, I'm not going to impose on you the rules of an environment that you are not in. Because I'm not a fucking deluded authoritarian cunt, Chrissy. To get, to get, wow, next. Well played. Uh, no interest. Next. Full disclosure. This is where the idea of this video came from. Oh, so so it, was, it wasn't Ted there? It wasn't your buddy Ted there? It wasn't your man Ted there? How many more lies? If you remember, after Trump's win, there was a minor trend of people wearing safety pins. It happened after a Brexit vote, too. Yeah, is it, if you don't accept the outcome of the public vote, then wear a safety pin in solidarity. <laughs> a pacifier while you're at it. What, call it giant fucking babies against democracy. It was to denote friendliness or allyship of people of color, LGBTQ, etc. Yeah, it's another form of sheep's clothing. Like the wristband or the ribbons or the praying for the terrorist victims with their flag in your avatar or fucking ever. It's, it's, we've come up with the new kind of sheep's clothing for the spring summer season. It's the safety pin. Woo! It, and there are two problems with sheep's clothing. One being, they all, it all looks the fucking same. The other being that wolves can wear it. Male wolves, female wolves, and everything that might be in between. Goody here tweeted out this pic of himself. <laughs> I've, I've seen that picture before, but I still love it. It's his favourite. It's the expression. It's fucking... Oh, God, it's perfect. <laughs> I mean, you don't, you don't even need a caption, right? If, if someone came at you, if anyone came at you wearing that expression, brandishing a safety pin, you'd quickly get the idea. <laughs> that's, that's why it's funny. No. Oh. It reads, Hey, minorities, women, and LGBTQs, look how trustworthy I am. I won't rape you or nothing. <laughs> Promise. Sorry, I, I'm enjoying the novelty of you reading out Goodfellas lines. You you excel at delivering Goodfellas lines, if nothing else. And so far, you excel at nothing else. Now, I was actually surprised by this because my understanding is that he's a men's rights guy. So I was like, hey, I thought you were against treating men like they're rapists. <laughs> You are clinically insane, Chrissy. You should not be trying to help people because you cannot. You physically cannot. You you should be walled away from people. You should be sat cross-legged, counting the tiles in the top floor washroom of an infirmary for the sick and brain damaged. Why is Goodfella 
portraying this character as a man? Because Goodfella has a man's face! Chrissy, he took a photo of his own face and he can't change his face to a woman's face. It's like, if he told that joke with his voice instead of his face, <laughs> if he went, I wouldn't rape, I won't rape you or nothing, promise. What do you think? But you said that in a Scottish accent. I thought you liked Scottish people, <laughs> but you're portraying them as rape. It's the only accent he's got. You tooty fruity fucking nutbar. And it's the only face he's got. It's the only face available for him to hold a safety pin in front of. Except maybe his son's face. Or perhaps the face of a woman passing nearby. Would you have found it less offensive if he used his son's face or the face of a woman passing nearby? It's, it's like if he painted a picture of a rapist using paint. You would look at it and go, but you're a painter. I thought painters liked paint, but you're making paint look like a rapist. <laughs> Tide goes in, tide goes out. You're the worst one, Chrissy. You're actually the worst one. I thought you might be one of the reasonable ones. I, I, I thought I might be able to have a sensible conversation with you, but you are seven shades to the fucking wind. You're gone. You shouldn't be in society. This is mental. What the fuck is a men's rights guy, by the way? That's what you called him. A men's rights guy. Is that like one rung down from an advocate, but still, still on the bad guy team? If you tolerate men's rights, you're a men's rights advocate. And if you tolerate men's rights advocates, you're a men's rights guy. Basically, if you have anything positive to say about men or their rights or their advocacy, anything to say that isn't a hysterical demonizing lie, then you're a misogynist as well. Hey, good fella. Are you a men's rights guy? He said yes. You got him, Chrissy. Well played. He said yes. You got him to say it. That's it, YouTube. Apply the new algorithm. He's officially a men's rights guy. Oh, wait. My mistake. He's not a men's rights guy. Which proves the point. Men's rights is bad because people distance themselves from the label. And people distance themselves from the label because men's rights is bad. Thank you. There's a problem here. I, I need to figure some stuff out. All right, let's move on. Thank you for giving me the final nail in my excuse for being exceptionally rude to you, Chrissy. You definitely deserve it. You are a dangerous moron. Next. Sargon is a fraud who's given so much to the advancement of Manosphirian humor that... <laughs> <laughs> Do you know who else has contributed, like, a fair amount to Manosphere and humour? I mean, you've done Sargon twice now. Can you really not think of anyone else? Yeah, I, like I said, I, it's, it's not as though I want the attention. Well, maybe I do, deep down, but I would regret it if I had it. I could be sure of that. But it's just, it weirds me out when they pretend I don't exist. It's, it's like the public can't know about me. I'm actually funny and actually quite well spoken and I don't dance with the I'm not an MRA game. So they can't for a minute talk about me or people might find themselves clicking in my direction. And when people find themselves clicking in my direction, they get deconverted. And we can't have that. So you all have to zone me out as much as possible. I imagine it's a lot like being a female men's rights advocate. You spend half your time arguing against people who are willfully pretending you don't exist. <laughs> MRAs are what we say they are. They're not women. They're all fat, ugly, neck-bearded, racist, sexist, right-wing, straight white men. Anyone who doesn't match that description or cannot be fudged and welded and straw-manned into oblivion to match that description just falls the fuck down the memory hole. Step one, decide what kinds of people you are allowed to hate. Step two, define all your opponents as those kinds of people. Step three, define all your friends as those kind of people. Step four, total metastasis. There is no step five. Step six, profit. 
This is why, at least tactically speaking, we need more female MRAs. And more you know, humorous and well-spoken MRAs, because then we will have an army of invisible people. People who the enemy will just willfully zone out into their blind spot. And then, then they will be forced to choose between fighting an army of invisible people or opening their fucking eyes. <clears throat> what we don't need is another splinter of pissy little pricks who want to scrap the whole movement and start again with them in charge. Because at that point, I can't tell the difference between you and a feminist or other common or garden megalomaniac. I thought I would spend a little time here talking about his other favorite joke, calling people autistic. Okay. I I managed to address this issue in a video in all the necessary detail without ever mentioning Sargon or mentioning any of the people who use this insult or making it a personal matter in any conceivable way. And yet I still gaggles of fanboys going, quit dissing Sargon, why are you calling Sargon an idiot, shut up. I took great pains to wade slowly into the shallow end of that piranha's nest, and I'm not going to follow you as you plunge into the fucking deep end. Do not address the man where possible. Address the argument, please. Next. All right, so I'm not going to address the um, arguments. <laughs> Again, I swear, I'm doing this bit by bit. I did. Wow. In the video, if you can call them that. Because what we're focusing on here is hilarity. <laughs> yeah, way to play a game you can't lose. It's not about the arguments, it's about the facts. <laughs> it, it doesn't matter if someone's making an argument, saying something that is true, perhaps setting up an expected falsehood and then confounding that expectation with the truth. That has nothing to do with comedy. No, no. <laughs> the point is hilarity. You didn't score high enough on Chrissy's hilaritometer. So, <laughs> Chrissy, to, br to bring it back to the point of your video, the reason you're making this response, there is, there's a stereotype going around that, that, that feminists and social justice lefties have no sense of humour. And, and you, you, you are hitting back against that stereotype by giving us some examples of things you don't find funny. Permit me to offer my professional opinion, Chrissy. You're doing it wrong. Now, this young girl... <laughs> and, and if you're looking for an example of the satiritician tragically failing at satire, then... Yeah, you really missed a doozy there, Chrissy. The the one I, the one everyone's thinking. You weren't even trying, although that was that was shoe on head successfully trolling the shit out of the ceratician. So it's in manosphere versus manosphere. One succeeded, one failed. Cancels each other out and tells us nothing. So I'll skip this one because I'm already embarrassed for you, Chrissy. This 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 video could have been good. It's an interesting format, but no, you have balls it up completely. Horrible, dude. Sorry. Dusty Smith! Dusty fucking Smith! Dusty, when's everyone gonna shut up about social justice Smith? He's part of the manosphere! He's not, is he? He's just an atheist. That's it. He's part of the skeptosphere, but as I said, like I said, every motherfucker in the world is part of the so-called skeptosphere. So, I don't, what does it take to be part of the manosphere then? You just have to be a man, right? And a skeptic. Holy shit, that's what it is, isn't it? It's male skeptics you don't like. That's the essence of your enemy. Men who disbelieve things. <laughs> if you're a man, the only way to appease feminists is never be skeptical about anything. Even skepticism! <laughs> you suck, Christy. You suck all of the things. Next. <laughs> Jezebel. As long as Jezebel continues to exist, and continues to pump out the same shit it's been pumping out ever since Paul did the gender swap on one of their fucking articles six fucking years ago. As long as Jezebel is continuing to pull the exact kind of shit of which you falsely accuse the voice for men all the fucking time. 
As long as Jezebel draws a wisp of breath on this good earth, and there is a link to it on that article! I do not have to waste another broken second of my time defending that fucking article. Every time you bring it up, you shoot yourself in the foot by revealing to the world the numbskulled double standard that you relentlessly hold. When Jezebel said it, they were dead serious, but to you it's just satire. When Paul said it, he called it satire, but to you it's dead serious. You are a fucking nutter. We have done this a hundred fucking times and you still wheel it out like we've done it zero times. Piss off and stay pissed off until you piss all the way off the off until there's no more piss left. Fucking use. And by the way, I've come to expect this from feminists. But what's very disappointing is when MRAs go rogue, very often they spontaneously decide this is a great argument after all. The men's rights movement would be much better off if we could just get rid of Paul Elam. So, you know, let's, let's look at some of his work while we mysteriously and selectively decide to ignore any concept of context. Yeah, and YouTube would be much better off if we could just get rid of PewDiePie. Flippity foppity foppity scum. Actual scum. Scum finger. You're sitting on the scum finger and it's in you. Churning the scum that is you. I don't know how you shit at night, scum. All right, last one. We're at number one now. What's it gonna be? Who's the class clown of the Manosphere? Who's the purveyor of whimsical wordplay to whom the citizens of the Manosphere go more regularly than anywhere else? To be sure of a regular bit of sincere and unironic rib tickling. And the winner is... The Daily Stormer is a feminist publication. Because he... <laughs> Twice herp. Thrice herp, I say to you, Chrissy. Look how helpful I'm being in the gender discussion and the struggle for equality. Look how much I care about women when I say I hereby declare the Coleman Dang a feminist institution. <laughs> Mussolini was gay. ISIS was formed by Black Lives Matter. Am I helping yet? Genghis Khan was an intersectional transracial lesbian kin. And that's why I don't understand humour. How are you even fucking serious, Chrissy? I, I, I did watch to the end of, of the video this time. Just to see if there would be a reveal. Where you go, ha, I was only joking. I don't really associate Nazis with everyone who's not a feminist. That was me being humorous to prove my point. That would have been reasonably clever. But it's, it's not there. There's no reveal. You have left us with the impression that you're actually serious. This is what you've been virtue signaling about. You are the fucking queen of virtue signaling, right? The first and foremost thing you have to say is, I actually care about people unlike everyone else, so I want a real discussion because I'm not just fucking around with gotchas and what. It said, this is the kind of discussion you want to have. Hey guys, check out what it says in this Nazi rag. This is not looking good for you, is it? Not looking good for men and everyone who represents them. Because you're all Nazis, are you? Are you? No gotchas here. No fuck around here. You are grotesque, Chrissy. Absolute fucking botulism. Have you asked the folks at Daily Stormer if they stand for or support men's rights? Are you, ask them, are you men's rights advocates? Do you think they'll tell you? No, we are not. Those guys are all cucks and baiters. Well, here's another pressing question, Chrissy. Have you asked the, the folks at the Daily Stormer if they stand for or support women's rights? Are you women's rights advocates, folks at Daily Stormer? Do you think they'll tell you? Of course we are. We want to save women's rights from the misogynistic men over yonder. Which is fucking uncanny, isn't it? Because at that point, you can't tell the difference between a so-called Nazi and a so-called leftist. They disagree on everything else. But when you say, we must liberate those weak women over there from those bad men over there, they join arms and each sings in his own tuneless drunken ramble. 
They're his fault, brother. They're his fucking fault. And another thing righties and lefties have in common is they both want men's rights scrapped and replaced. One wants to replace it with traditionalism and the other wants to replace it with sand feminism. So here's a long story. Fe well, feminism is where you apply impossible standards on your own men. Sand feminism is where you only apply those impossible standards to the enemy's men. Which, funnily enough, is exactly the same as traditionalism. It's a very long story. So I think I'll have to leave it there, Chrissy. Last time we, talk, we talked to well, last time I responded to you, I told you that your mind is fat and you need to trim the gristle. But I now realise that it, if you did that, there would be nothing left. Your mind is nothing but a, a plastic dish full of fatty scraps that not even the dogs would eat. Like a, like a foundry cast full of molten lard. Superheated and, and agitated. <laughs> Until it's some kind of fucking pan-amniotic pork plasma. <laughs> this, this is, this is going to be the longest you guys have ever had to hold out for a video title. <laughs> but here goes. Goodbye. Goodbye. Fuck right.